Our second speaker is Professor Kuhn van Balen, uh, who is the full professor at KU Leuven Civil Engineering Department. He is the acting director of the Raymond Le Maire International Center for Conservation at the University of Leuven, holder of the RICOMOS UNESCO chair since 2008. He was member of the Research Council of KU Leuven from 2016 until 2020. He is one of the initiators of Hercule, the KU Leuven Institute for Cultural Heritage. He is member of ECOMOS Belgium and former Secretary General of ECOMOS International Scientific Committee on Structures, Monument uh, Watch Flanders, WTA Rillem, and member of the Council of Europa Nostra since 2015. He is the chair of the conservation jury for the European Heritage Europa Nostra Awards, and he represents Europa Nostra in the advisory board of the Joint Programming Initiative on Cultural and Heritage and Global Change. He is involved in activities of periodic reporting on world heritage in the Arab region, in projects in Lebanon and Jordan, UNESCO World Heritage Sites, in a research collaboration in Ecuador and Cuba, and he was a visiting scholar at the Getty Conservation Institute in Los Angeles between 2002 and 2003. Professor Van Balen will be speaking about Kiyu Leuven, the Cultural Heritage Institute, Herkul, towards a common transition. What I would like to share with you is uh, some experiences that we are dealing with uh, with the university. And uh, I just, during your talk, Hannah, I also added a slide, which comes from a statement which I translated from Dutch uh, to uh, to English uh, from um, just something on the journal today, but you will see why it's coming up. So, what is the context uh, um, within Kuil Leuven? Uh, the university thought that it would be interesting to develop institutes, and the basic idea of those institutes would be to promote interdisciplinary networks within university and to promote interdisciplinary uh, collaboration. This is something which was happening at the moment that yet we were thinking about uh, um, bringing interdisciplinary research, but not only interdisciplinary research, also different organizations within the universities that are wor working with cultural heritage. And that also has triggered uh, another governance model for our institute compared to one, many of the other ones, because many of the other institutes are basically looking at um, doing research, uh, looking for uh, let's say, collaboration for European projects, uh, collaborating with other partners out of the university, uh, but they are always researchers. And we, of course, realize that uh, when you're thinking thinking about cultural heritage and the University of Leuven, which is soon becoming 600 years old, uh, we are not only talking about researchers, we are talking about services uh, that are taking care of books, that are taking care of archives, that have collections of objects, uh, but it's also about uh, ourselves. It's all about students uh, recognizing that cultural heritage is something which is around them, which in a certain sense influence them. And it's also the case for, for researchers. From that, we figured out that uh, maybe one way of working together would be to, um, to work radically different. And we have developed, as I will show you later, our uh, institute based on the on the principles of the commons. But let me try to explain you a little bit about it. And what you see here, you can uh, look at the website address at the top uh, right, uh, so you can you can inform yourself about what Hercule, which is the name of our institute, uh, stands for. So, um, of course, in, uh, in that preparation, we have been discussing quite a lot with uh, with different colleagues, uh, and I think we yeah, have side this slide that you see here is from one of those books, which I think is an interesting reading uh, because it brings together many different aspects about uh, how commons are organized. Uh, but what we learned or what I think is most important and uh, which is, is from one hand explaining why commons are, is interesting to be dealing with within university, but at the same time, another way of understanding what cultural heritage is about is the fact that um, the stewardship for for, for the commons is based on shared values, norms, and customs. And I think this is something which helps, according to me, very much the discussion about when we are talking about heritage. Uh, I can say that we can say that something is not cultural heritage if it is not shared, and it is only cultural heritage because we share it. Uh, and so it's because many people within a community 
agree on, on, on that. And it's exactly the comment that Hannah was making about communities, which triggered me to get add, to add this next slide, one of the next slides that you will see. So we understood uh, that culture is, is about shared values. It's about sharing them, but also creating them. And in a certain sense, I think that may be a little bit different in terms of when you look at culture at broader sense than to culture heritage, and that it is contributing to well-being. And the sentence about modern economy and employment is exactly this, because one of the key issues about or one of the key aspects which goes together with values is about understanding how do you measure values. Uh, and um, this is about understanding that you share something. And usually in, in, in the past, we very often have been trying to always redirect our understanding about values and about sharing values to euros or dollars or whatever currency we are looking at. Uh, and one of the key elements of the value creation and the concepts of commerce is to create benefits. Uh, values, uh, monetary values can be benefits, but there are many different ways of doing uh, dealing with benefits. And one of the things that Hane was referring to, if we took, if we take it from the perspective of investment or the use of resources, was the uh, the word time uh, that she was using. And so giving time is uh, not only something that you can redirect by euros to understand how much it stands for, but it is it has a, its value by itself. Uh, and definitely, if you look to uh, diversities of of communities, and so. Um, so in the case of cultural heritage, it's a little bit more narrow than, than the broader cultural context, but nevertheless, the way we look at cultural heritage in, in, in our institute is very much open towards the culture in, in general. So therefore, we, we uh, thought that health, the Hercule community should go beyond uh, researchers and their sponsors. I explained it uh, as cultural heritage reflects values shared by a wide and diverse part of the university community in a very inclusive way. And so I think it, it takes, it has many words, which are each of them very of great importance, for example, the aspect of inclusivity. Now, we didn't invent anything, uh, but I think you may know that in 2009, there was a Nobel Prize. I think strictly spoken, it's not a Nobel Prize, but it's something at least equivalent. Um, and um, so it's, uh, it is uh, Eleanor Oldstrom who has been developed some basic concepts, and I will not go into the details uh, of it, uh, but it, it, it summarizes a number of things. It summarizes the fact that it's important to identify boundaries. It's important to, to identify rules. It's important to have sanctioning systems, and it is important to have conflict resolution. So all of this in one way or another means that your governance system should take into, into account those different, uh, different needs, and I will not go into the details. If you go a little bit closer, you would particularly see this kind of uh, uh, experiences uh, because corporations are even so, well, maybe sometimes older than the way we thought uh, and think about commons. Uh, and what is particularly interesting, I think also in the relationship with, uh, with Hercule is, for example, to address the importance of education and training and information. And so the aspect of, of, of communication and, and sharing becomes a very important element. It's not so explicit in the things that Alstom is referring to. Um, but, uh, and of course, everything which is related to the democratic member uh, and control. And here comes the site, the statement that comes from, its, uh, from the newspaper today. Uh, um, I thought it was interesting because, um, and I, I shared it by link in LinkedIn, so some of you, but it was in Dutch when I shared it. Because I think it explains in, in some way uh, something what Hannah was sometimes referring to. It's about what are communities. And communities sometimes have the tendency, of course, to identify their identities and to identify their values. And of course, we sometimes have the tendency in saying, yes, OK, yeah, we have these communities. And we are, if you look at Europe, a kind of a, of a yes, a, a, a huge diversity of communities, which each their different values. But the point is, how do they relate with each other? And do they have fight to do it to each other? How do we look at that? And I was usually saying, OK, we should be working uh, respectfully. But I think that this is, in a certain sense, interesting. Eh? Because uh, in that article of uh, Ignaz de Vries, who is a philosopher in Belgium, um, and he was talking about tolerance is not outdated, eh? because sometimes we send then start to say about Maybe tolerance is the way how you can uh, acknowledge uh, diversities of, of values and diversities of communities and diversity of cultures. 
But he says that uh, he says it's quite interesting. Eh? If you want to turn that struggle, eh, that struggle, it's a, it's about understanding tolerance in the right way and, and to use tolerance uh, into a peaceful coexistence of divergent uh, values. Uh, we need we need a new interpretation of tolerance, and it should be based on two things. And I think that's important. The first one, recognizing that our lives encompass more than what we consume together. Uh, and that brings us back to the discussion about euros and and the, and the very let's say uh, consumistic way that we, we we look at it, and aligning our divergent core beliefs. And so that it means that we do not we have to respect them in a certain sense, but at the same time we have to acknowledge our own values and and take those things uh, on board. So I thought it was just interesting. It's from the newspaper of today, so it's very fresh. Um, so I will not go and dwell too much in the details, but what I wanted to share with this uh, slide, of course, the first one is uh, the book I was referring to, uh, from Peer-to-Peer, uh, -peer, the Commons Manifesto by Michel Bowens. You can download it. It's for, for free, and I think it's interesting reading. Um, and of course, on the Peer-to-Peer -peer Foundation, you can find a lot of uh, information. And the background of the slide, maybe not very visible, is that there is also something which is existing, which is the International Association for the Study of the Commons. So there is also an academic environment working worldwide uh, on um, understanding how commons functions and which are the good and the bad practices, all the things that work and do not work, as uh, seeing it in the words of Hama. Huh? Um, closer by in Belgium, we have Smart B, yeah, which is, uh, I think, yes, Sir Michel Bowers, of course, knows it. He, was, he is related to that. But uh, together with the Inspire Foundation, there are examples of how uh, people in the, in the cultural sector and in the design industry, uh, many of them are working in that field, um, are seeking ways uh, to collaborate. And they, and particularly Inspire is a very interesting example about how and how far you can go in uh, working according to the principles of the commons, even if you are um, not limiting yourself to non-for-profit organizations. So also how how you can you can in a certain sense create benefits partially benefits in terms of monetary uh, benefits, um, but how you can how you can work that uh, further, and both of those uh, things are uh, particularly interesting because uh, if you overall look to the different type of uh, industries and sectors which are working, um, the reason why those two are probably directing themselves in that way is basically because they are very small players. And right? so we have a, a huge community of very, very small actors uh, who are look, seeking for ways to work together instead of working aside each other, which is very often uh, helping or which is very often happening in the cultural, in the cultural sector, particularly, in the, for example, in the design uh, sector. So just to say there are very inspiring examples. And for example, here's what, uh, what uh, Inspire is doing. And they share all of this information. You can find handbooks about it. And so we are sharing money, we are sharing power, we are sharing information. So it says everything about the fact that even if you are in a more, let's say, entrepreneurial way of thinking, uh, that commons is not against this kind of ideas. It's on the contrary, uh, that you can you can facilitate this kind of uh, activity. Yeah, that is yeah. Cool. And it can. Yeah. And it can go, of course, even much further, eh, like the collaborative entrepreneurship uh, that you that I share here with you uh, as the um, some links that you that you can find. Very well known examples, of course, eh, are the, the the Creative Commons, eh, something that is uh, we are usually, or well, you know it very well from from the type of copyright copyleft uh, discussion, and. All, all of this worldwide organization, each of them, of course, have their own way of uh, collaborating, identifying their, their governance uh, system. And based on all of that, in some way or another, we developed ours as, uh, as Hercule. And so what is important uh, in this uh, particular uh, context is that uh, to recognize the, the possibility of being becoming member of an organization as being part of the organization. Uh, our rules are that uh, you should be linked in one way or another to the university, but you can be an external organization becoming member of Hercule as long as there is a link with uh, one member within the, the, the Kyle Leuven community. All activities are developed by working groups, so there is a very open structure of taking initiatives for working groups to work uh, together. Uh, for example, we have a working group 
just to, I think we have about nine working groups for the moment. And one which is, for example, dealing with how do we set the rules for HQ, and so it can be related to your own functioning and your org organization, but it can also be um, more thematic. Yeah? For example, the whole discussion about decolonization of cultural heritage is one working group where we have quite a lot of active uh, people uh, involved, uh, working together, thinking together, and also looking jointly uh, to set up uh, projects within, uh, let's say, for within the university, with European projects, as well with other actors. Okay, to make it work, what is important is that you have, of course, a kind of an executive board, uh, which is supervising things, which is facilitating uh, what the community wants uh, to deal with. But what is as important is to have, and you saw it, for example, in the example of the of the, the previous case uh, that I was seeing here with the Creative Commons, that you have something which is also a membership committee. That recalls what uh, Alstom was saying about um, the fact that you should, in a certain sense, it understand your your limits and at the same time identify uh, how you what is working and what is not working and the steering committee as an organization uh, or a committee uh, so of members here where we also have a number of external visionary people uh, inside has the idea of looking at the gro the long term and also in a certain sense and i think that's important uh, to close here to say that all of this is not the, the normal way how the university is working right um, so we are really bit challenging our own university in uh, working in different ways to understand, for example, uh, the creation of the co-creation of benefits in a different way as the normal indicators of the university are usually developed. So I'm happy to stop here. I hope I didn't spend too much more time than necessary and I'm happy to join the discussion. Thank you very much, uh, Kuhn, for this inspiring presentation, actually, uh, which uh, sets the ground uh, for very innovative interdisciplinary uh, collaboration uh, within such an important uh, institution like KU Leuven. Um, by embracing the, the commons uh, principles, you're um, pushing borders and trying to work with different departments, uh, which maybe uh, it could be seen as very innovative um, uh, approach. For example, from my understanding, you also work with the medicine department. You you work also with the administrative staff. You work with students. So it's it's really enlarging the debate towards giving the opportunity to everyone to contribute to what cultural heritage is and what is at stake.